Hello my soccer universe. Real Madrid making an incredible 15 titles in the Champions League. That's more than double than the next best team in Europe, which is of course AC Milan. At seven and then a bunch at six and five scrunched together. It is just um, unbelievable and everyone ahead of the game said that you only could see Real Madrid winning this one unless you had a really uh, Dortmund goggles on. After the first half where Dortmund outplayed Real Madrid, should have gone with at least a one if not a two goal lead into half time. Everyone knew Real Madrid is gonna win this one. Real Madrid won this one. It is just one of those things. Uh, it is also very fitting to Dortmund in general and, and I think it makes uh, Dortmund a more sympathetic club for like the average fan that this is a team that can reach for the heights you know it's very much a classic football club with a very rabid uh, and dedicated fan base 50 plus one and so on doing it the right way without any millionaires putting money in there although there was kind of a big uproar at the moment with a new sponsor so yeah uh, but they don't win it you lost the Bundesliga that you should have won last year and you lost the Champions League final that you should have won this year. That's Dortmund for you. That's Aiden Terzic Dortmund. Um, but you know, I would like to say that you can be proud of them, that they can be proud of themselves and how they played. But on the other side, this really, really, really stinks because they were not outplayed. They were definitely not outplayed. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the final. I mean, Wembley, a great stage. Um, Lenny Kravitz opening. Uh, you know, I'm not the hugest uh, Lenny Kravitz fan, but any rock act in such things is for me already ready, ready with. But why do we need the dancers there? This time, I have to say, I was surprised, but maybe it was uh, right, fully mixed, uh, rightly, but maybe it was mixed the right way. Because at the Conference League League final, the DJ got completely drowned out by all the fan chants, especially from Olympiacos. This time, I thought that the Dortmund fans might do that, but um, I guess I did not hear that. Um, the game starts and immediately there's a streaker running on. They're taking a selfie with Bebel and it takes forever to get him uh, reined in. I think Marcel Savica had something to do with it, which was probably his biggest hit of the entire night as well. Of course. Of course, we didn't see much of it because you have a quickly cut away from it because no, not encourage this behavior. But I was really baffled how easily this guy could walk on. I mean, all the security personnel had a major nap here and not a little minus. I would say everything else was perfect. I have to say but a lot of minus for uh, a London final, I have to say. And it really annoys because Wembley is such a great stage. The game itself, I would say for the first 50 minutes, was relatively even, of course, Real Madrid having more of the ball. Uh, Vinny tried to be, you know, very much the best that he can be and also create some chances. Uh, there was also a first chance for Dortmund, but I was, in the first 50 minutes, I thought, if Real Madrid have the ball and they play their game, it actually looks really good and Dortmund don't, don't, don't have that. Except that Dortmund then really came onto Real Madrid and it started with a brilliant pass by Mats Hummels out of his own half into Adeyemi who makes the run, cuts across from the left side onto the center where he gets the ball and then he makes the one mistake. He doesn't carry on in this direction because it would be on his weak foot. If he carries on, I think he goes past Courtois. He was one on one, but he goes straight to Courtois and wants to go around the left side. And that gives Courtois enough time to, re to, re to readjust and then the uh, Real Madrid defenders also harry him a little bit and his shot then eventually goes on the outside of the post, if at all. So that was the first big chance at that moment. And let's be honest, while overall I was relatively neutral, I didn't care if Real Madrid wins a 15th or Dortmund wins a second. I honestly I didn't have really have, I could find positives in each of the stories in this game. But the more the game went on, the more it was clear to me that I'm for the outside. I mean, you usually root for the outside unless you have a rooting interest uh, for the big guy. So yeah, there you go. Um, I already said, this was such a big chance. There's no way that Dortmund is going to me. I said this already in the 21st minute. Of course, they have the more big chance. I mean, uh, are they Amy again? And I'm surely missing one or two of, of, of these. But the ones that come to mind is, of course, the one by Fulkrug, probably slightly offside where he goes on the inside of the post. Uh, I think there was another uh, the image chance there. I know there was late later on a sub it's a chance. Um, I think Julian Brandt had one as well. You know, 
Dortmund created chances. Real Madrid were not really on the field. The only thing that was dangerous from the Real Madrid side is when uh, a, a ball was played to Kobo and Vinny wants to intercept him and then steps on him and Kobo is kind of injured, which uh, got Vinny a yellow card. I guess it's all right. I, he didn't go on to Kobo, but I, I think the Dortmund players were a little bit too much uh, on to him. Uh, but then it's flipped, quickly flipped the other side. That then there were a couple of yellow cards given for Schlotterbeck and Sabitzer, mostly for complaining too much, which I also didn't feel quite right. Especially since at this moment, and Vinny Jr. really tried to do everything to flop himself and uh, draw fouls this way, which, uh, you know, was not a very nice move. But on the other side, you know, you playing a Champions League final, you, you're not nice. Let's put it that way. I think you don't need to be nice in this case. But yeah, that was definitely an interesting period in the entire game. Um, at halftime, and I watched it on Sky Sports, also Australia with Didi Hamann in the studio. Uh, while they said Dortmund played a great half, however, they should at least lead by a goal, if not two. And everyone kind of agreed. Yeah, we all know how Hull how, how game is going to end. Real Madrid is going to win it or deflect the shot. Did not quite come that, but everyone, everyone had it in their heads that there's only one winner out of this game. If you miss so many chances, and it's also a doubling up from what the, when the last uh, final that Dortmund played at Wembley, where they also had many chances against Bayern Munich. Didn't take them one. Who won? Bayern Munich, the bigger team. You need to take your chances. It's always the same story. You need to take your chances. Look at how Atalanta beat Leverkusen. If Lukman would have missed those two first two goals, Leverkusen might have well won this one. No, you took your chances. Dortmund didn't take them. However, in the second half, at least at, at, at the beginning, yes, there was a glorious chance, a close free kick uh, that was an unnecessary foul, let's put it that way as well. Brilliant taken and a great save by Kobel. I mean, this was probably, from an aesthetic point of view, the best action of the entire game, I have to say. Uh, the free kick was brilliant. The save was equally brilliant. Uh, this was the highlight of the final, if you were to ask me. Uh, but then also Fulkrug had a darting header right at Courtois, uh, which was kind of, yeah, this is another big one. Yes, the save for Courtois was probably not a difficult one because it was right at him. But if he places that header a little bit differently, boy. This could have mean, meant 1-0 toward Dortmund. And then they still would have a chance. But around the hour mark, the game slowed down. You could feel Dortmund kind of, we gave it our all. But now if we're opening up too much, we might give up something. And Real Madrid started to a little bit feel itself because the game really was played at a snail's pace. It got nervous. And then there was a few things. And again, it's Vinny Jr. who makes kind of the first swing in the other direction when uh, I think... He with a back, marks a back heel nutmeg on Hummels, I wanna say, and you know you see his big grin afterwards, and you could feel, oh yeah, we got them where we want them. The deciding moment though came after what should have been an emotional part of the game, or it could have been an emotional swing for, for the game. Adeyemi, who had missed so many chances, but was kind of this uh, the speedster that Real Madrid's defense could not really contain. Uh, came off and Marco Reus came on and you know the um, melancholic side would say yeah this is now his chance to score the winning goal in his last game for Dortmund. I don't know if Dortmund didn't give up a lot of attacking power but I think the mistakes came on the other side. Matzen imploded in a way. He gave away an absolutely unnecessary corner. There was no need for it and yes it's just a corner. It's not a dangerous situation, except it was. Then he misses his assignment. He was on Carvajal. Then suddenly Fulkrug is in the middle of another shoot. We go with Carvajal and it's not his, his man. It's a cross uh, corner and Carvajal heads it in. 1-0. 74th minute. More or less, I would say, the first chance of... Nah, second chance because we had the cross free kick. And yes, there was also a cross in there from Vinny that Bellingham missed. I think this was two chances. But it felt like it was only the second shot on goal for Real Madrid at this point. And you knew that this was the game. And then it was Danny Carvajal who started all the finals that Real Madrid have now won. But was always kind of a bit part player. I think it was kind of sim 
a symbol for this Real Madrid side as well. I actually really enjoyed uh, the fact that it was him scoring. Probably would have been him happy if it was Jose Lo, but of course Jose Lo was not on the, on the field. At that point then, Dortmund, you could see, they were shaken. And they could not stitch passes together. Real Madrid intercepted. Real Madrid, uh, Harry, Harry, David. It was uh, fully all going Real Madrid's favor. And then Madsen plays another a bad ball. And Vinny Jun uh, Bellingham intercepts it. Vinny goes to Vinny Jr. Vinny Jr. makes it 2 0. Game. Yes, full crook. Seemingly pulled one back, but again, he's offside. That could have made it a little bit more exciting, but in the end, it was very easy for Real Madrid to see this out. They won it in an unconvincing fashion. But this was the whole story through the entire tournament. Especially in knockout stage. None of the knockout ties were convincing. They also eliminated the entire Bundesliga. They play against Union Berlin, Leipzig, Bayern, not Dortmund. There you go. Uh, I really like the cordial Congratulations by Terzic with Angelotti. I really like how T Angelotti went to the Real Madrid section to meet his wife. Uh, that was something, you know, I like Carlo. I also thought that the, cel the celebrations, you could see there were two types of celebrations for Real Madrid. There were uh, the Bellingham, for instance, who I cannot believe I've won it. Oh, great, I've won the first Champions League. Uh, really beside himself, in a way. And then the, the, the routine celebrations by the Modric's, the Crosses, the Carvajal's, and so on. Which is then, yeah, that's what, what, what we do. Six. Uh, six. Six. We have done six. That's what we do. Uh, yes, it was maybe a little bit more emotional for Kroos because it was his last game for Real Madrid, but yeah, uh, it was really, really weird. I also liked how Angelotti, you know, usually uh, at the celebration you see a whole lot, a lot of stuff, but there was only the players there and there was Carlo and Angelotti, but he was, and you could see, he's the leader of this team. He's the leader of this group. Absolute leader of, of this group. Yes, he did not leave the trophy, but he was there. He said, I'm with you. I'm part, 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 part of you guys. And you know, for a coach that is father figure, professor, but also really enjoys still being among the players because at his heart, he is a player. That was rather special. Angelotti has now won five Champions League as a coach. Three, three, three two, two, two with Milan. He adds two more with Milan as a player. He also won one as an assistant coach in 94 with Milan. He's Mr. Champions League. And that without a really identifiable style, he's just a superstar whisperer, if you would like. He puts the players in the right positions. And I think uh, while this Real Madrid side may not have been overall convincing this season, they were a team. This was supposed to be a transition season for Real Madrid. However, he made this in, in the team despite having not, not even striker. They let go of Benzema. The manager, Rodriguez Bellingham, who holds up. He built a really great team there that worked together. That makes this triumph, I think, very, very special. I would not call it the most convincing of any uh, of the entirety of their 15 triumphs. But this was a team triumph that also stands out for another fact. It's the first triumph unbeaten. Also well, the first one at Wembley, but that's a minor fact. The first one unbeaten. By having played Leipzig in Manchester City and Bayern. That's impressive. That's impressive. Not convincing, but impressive. And all credit has to go to Carlo Ancelotti. Right there and then also note that he didn't make any changes until the 85th minute. More or less telling the guys, yes, you dug yourself a hole here, but you get, can get, get this out there. They did it. For Dortmund, it's very fitting to Dortmund, as I said. You threw away Bundesliga, they should have won. You probably should have won this champ Champions League final. And I think this will take some digesting. But you know, you're very used to digesting uh, these losses as well. But for now, congratulations, Real Madrid, um, kings of Europe, again and again and again. And how did you like it that Zidane brought the trophy and then he was the assistant to Ajolt? I mean, <laughs> it was also fun at the celebration, but he was just there. Yeah, I'm one of you guys. I'm in an official function, but I'm one of you. It's just Real Madrid, I... It's all I can say, it's Real Madrid. In any case, this ends now the European club season. Almost, we have a few things still left to be decided. You know, there's one less Serie A game. I will have now on Monday, Tuesday, a few review videos Serie A and generally overlook looking all over Europe. Then 
bunch of unpacking videos to kind of bridge yourself over and then we'll get into Euro 2024 mode, which is the big one coming up. So we have now almost two weeks to prepare ourselves for the big event coming in Germany. Perfect. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, please drop a line below what you thought about the final. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.